How's it going? We're gonna go for part two of uh, painting like Picasso. Been looking at this painting and just thinking, like, there needs to be a lot more done with it. it. Wasn't finished at all. Picasso famously said, a painting is never finished. It's abandoned. <laughs> but, um, I abandoned this painting and still needs more time. So I'm on the live stream, I'm on Twitch. For those watch me on YouTube, those on Twitch, my YouTube channel is Painting Course on YouTube. And for my painting course, people on YouTube, my Twitch channel is Oil Paintings. So if you want to watch me live stream there, I usually live stream or I'm going to try to live stream there um, and then cut them up. Cut them up and make videos from those for YouTube. But we got to get back into this Picasso. That's the most important thing. I'm wrapped up. I'm in my new studio in uh, Prague, Czech Republic. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it together. Um, yeah, just got this new studio space. It's a storefront studio. So it's basically a, a storefront. And my friends had an antique shop here and they moved out. The guy who ran it was actually, he did a lot of augmented reality and virtual reality stuff so it's kind of interesting that he also had a shop, an antique shop. I got that, got this thing behind me from him for a good price, so that's good. So, we got the, the frontal cam going on. Here's the painting. You can see that. You know, it, it was an okay start. It just feels really unfinished and it feels too tight. So, we're gonna jump into it, look at some Picassos. I should bring him some Picassos on the the old pochi touch first. Check, you call a computer pochi touch. That means counter. Pochi touch means to count. So, a computer is a counter. But I suppose compute was a word before computers came around, right? So, that works out too. You want to see my look at this awesomeness. It's the way we're rolling. We could actually do a little tour of my paintings too if you want to see what I'm working on. I'm working on this big one here. These people exploding into their avatars. We got these portraits as well. These are done on panel, which I like a little bit more because you can uh, pour on it. I like doing pours. This is just a few paintings. I've only been here like a month, so I'm still just getting back into the groove. I've got about a week on this one so far. I like to finish one of these every month. We have 12 big paintings a year. On this old painting, they're gonna throw away. And so I just painted a new painting in it. I'm in the frame, kind of this cat creature. So yeah, it's my little space, the Oko Academy. I take one student here. All right, I'm gonna get my brushes, get my stuff, get situated. Got the silicoil, just a jar with a coil in it. I usually have gloves, but it's hard to find gloves these days, as you can imagine. 
but I am constantly getting stuff on my hands. Although taking printmaking, I did printmaking um, for a year, no, two years, I did printmaking stuff. And that like totally changed my mindset on painting actually, because that's so messy. I'm just so messy. My like jeans were always covered in paint. And I was like a printmaker's worst nightmare when I came in there. This is gonna situate my fix my collar. I should pop my collar. I think it's messed up that the, the jock look from the, the 80s came back. You know, like the the jocks from Revenge of the Nerds and those types of films in the 80s. Meatballs. Have you watched any of those? But there was always this jock, there was like a jock mentality in these movies. My brushes are pretty, but anyway, yeah, people started dressing like him again. They're like, yeah, this is cool. This is, this is how we want to look. We want to look like rich, privileged jerks, basically. But maybe I, I gotta go for that look. Bring it back. I don't know what I can do. Oh, yo. This painting needs a lot more. Bruh. So much of painting is just looking. This section really bugs me. So I'm trying to kind of find a second face in here. Maybe I could go down in here, make an eye. There we go. Start with just turning that into an eye. These colors are so... This orange thing is just not working. It's supposed to be a sideways look. This side's all right. I need to get more brushes, so I'm just painting this all with one brush. I don't clean my brush too often. Should pull up some Picassos. Let's look at some Picasso portraits. You always gotta wonder now when they're when you're doing um, searches. There's so many people that have their paintings come up. Maybe this painting's gonna come up now when people look for Picasso portrait, and it's like that's not a Picasso portrait. Somebody's like copy of one. I've seen people use those in like presentations and stuff too. It's like what? So we can look at some of these portraits here. This is kind of the period that I'm interested in. Like I was saying before, this one's even got the sideways eye and the front eye, but he's going for the other side of the face. I hadn't seen that one. Certainly big areas of just flat color in these two now that I'm looking at them. You know, just big areas of flat color.
we're going into the next Roaring Twenties. That's why I'm looking at the Twenties. Because once this is over... Oof, that's good. Painful. And here we got the, you know, the OG Cubist stuff where it's just about, we're looking at different planes of the face. Maybe we should make some of those planes in this. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna rip off this little eye socket move here. I'm gonna take that eye socket and plop it into there and kinda wedge some shapes, because I think my shapes, these shapes are all just too flat, you know? Um, yeah, let's go back, I'll show you on mine. I think my shapes are just too flat. You know, this, this box is just too flat and it's flattening the space. It doesn't seem like there's planes intersecting with it. So we're going to look at that painting um, that I just showed you previously. Get the title of it. I don't know, we don't got the name. Pinterest, come on now. <laughs> How does Pinterest still exist? Cubism, yeah, what's the name of the painting? Fernanda. Portrait of Fernanda. Or Fernarda. Fernarda. Portrait of Fernarda by Pablo Picasso, done in 1909. So that's the painting that I'm going to be uh, looking at as I jump into this one. Come on, you can do it. This is the problem with Google Images. Back when I was a kid, you just click on the image and it'd take you right to the image. But then somebody sued Google. Um, I think it was even like Getty Images sued Google and they're like, you can't just link directly to our images. So, yeah, now we gotta deal with what we gotta deal with. Let me make sure I'm on, uh... I wonder if I could even... Let's see what happens. I'm gonna try a power move here. I'm gonna open this and actually put it in for reference so I can see it. Bear with me. Picasso. to start off by mixing up a dark color here, get some new shadows. Everybody's got a shadow, everybody's got a shadow self. Shadows tell us how stuff looks, how the light works, and that tells us about form relates to how we experience the world. Yay. Let's experience a painting. And imagine this being a plane.
good thing about oil painting is that you can always, uh, like these types of lines that are too thick, you can always just go over them later. So this is almost a sketching phase. I'm not using any paint thinner, as you can see. Paint thinner was actually invented later on. Paint, paint thinner is a pretty new concept in terms of oil painting. What did they use before paint thinner? Soap. It's not that complicated. Check out my Instagram if you want to see what type of paintings I make. I do these painting-like videos for fun. It's kind of an amalgam. This is like a Frankenstein, Picasso Frankenstein at this point. Breaking all sorts of rules, crossing decades. It's like a, m a mix up of 30s Picasso and 20s Picasso. Picasso fanatics out there probably like, this isn't Picasso! But as with all of these painting like exercises, I don't claim to be a master Picasso forger or a master Van Gogh forger or Dali. But I do these videos because they're fun. That's it. <laughs> ah, it's fun, like, working in somebody else's style. Can actually, no matter what, it can help you also learn more about what you're trying to do. I'm actually put this thing a little bit sideways. shadow a little bit darker on the inside. I want this guy to get a little bit I can feel like there's some dimension there. See Picasso wasn't fussy. I'm being too fussy right now. He's just like blop 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 too fussy. Oh, this was a self-portrait, wasn't it? <laughs> I was generous with myself. It is hard though because, let's see. Okay, so we got light coming here. This is gonna be more in shadow down here. We're gonna actually imagine this as a straight thing. And then I'm gonna connect these two. This whole thing. Mm -hmm. so this would be darker. I'm starting to feel more having more form. We still see the, the actual uh, light side and dark side. And this doesn't really feel like it has a dark side. So I'm going to darken this up. That's the thing with Picasso. All this stuff seems like out of whack and really weird. Uh, but in a lot of cases, I got triple eyes. I don't know how many times Picasso did three eyes. I might even, this eye is good. I might just take this eye out. Mm. 
Maybe we just get rid of this. Fuck! It's gone. There we go. It's all about the evolution of the painting with Picasso. It's like if you look at uh, the painting he did. for the Picasso mystery. It's called The Mystery of Picasso or Picasso Mystery. You can find it on YouTube. And uh, he's constantly just changing stuff around, reinventing his painting, letting the painting unfold. So I'm trying to do that a little bit as well. I don't like this orange on the eye. Let's get rid of that. You don't want to just mess stuff up with Picasso either, because there is, like I said, there is an underlying form and structure that we kind of want to uphold a little bit so our, our eyes can, can latch on to something and make sense of it. It's a criticism I get for my big paintings that I do often, is that uh, they're, they're so messed up that it's hard for anybody to even grasp onto anything. If you want to check those out, there's a big one that I'm doing right now. But the point of them, partially the point of them is to do exactly that and make it impossible to, to discern, to be loud and obnoxious. Because they're all about people's egos colliding with the internet. Doesn't mean they're loud and annoying, but it means there's a lot of loudness on the internet. Just like TV. You can read about this stuff going back to the 50s. Marshall McLuhan is the guy to read on these topics and basically he came up with this idea that the medium is the message and he wrote a book called the medium is the message and they actually printed it wrong and they printed it as the medium is the massage and he got a bunch of these books printed with the wrong title the medium is the massage And he was like, I kind of like that. So, the idea that medium, media is kind of massaging you into buying a new toaster. Sometimes they're just being loud and obnoxious too. You know, spam works. There's a reason that spam works. If one out of every 2,000 people respond, Maybe that's, that's all you need is one person. See in the top right, these are just some older, older videos I put on, kind of interspersing some of my personal life, personal videos in there too, just of like nature and stuff like that. Since the internet is kind of like a collective unconscious. After we're no longer here, I think there's little denying that the internet will be a lot of people's legacy. All their memories. What they wanted to do, videos like this. Somebody in a hundred years will be watching a video like this. 
on their augmented reality glasses. I was joking, like, in class, I feel like, you know, a couple years ago, I would I talked about augmented reality and how um, it's going to change the way we see the world and experience the world because a lot of people don't understand with painting when they talk talk about it now, when you look back at these old paintings like cubism and this sort of stuff, they're about more than just making stuff look cool. Right? Picasso was interested in ideas besides, oh, this looks cool. And oftentimes I think now in the Instagram age of painting, where Instagram is obviously key, Go check my Instagram. <laughs> um, key to an artist's success. Kind of make this more focused on the, does this look cool? Does this appeal to other people? And it makes you have a different engagement with an audience as well. How are we engaging an audience now? It's really different than 100 years ago. 30 years ago. I'm just making up all these different little planes, having them intersect. Juan Uglo is a good person to look at if you like these intersecting planes. E U A N, Juan. And his last name's Uglo. U G L O W. He's got really like schematic architectural paintings of people, and they're all just these different planes intersecting with one another. Giacometti, of course, as well, is a good person to look at. I can put some images up in the in the supercut. You know, maybe I just follow the rules. It's like this is the rules for live streaming video game stuff. Make make these long streams. What are you doing stuff? Cut them up and put them on YouTube. But it's kind of amazing that you can. With webcams, the thing I like is I don't have, I don't gotta deal with memory. I don't gotta get my zip drive or my iOmega drive out. I Omega Zip Drive. If anybody knows, that was like an early, that was like a, a big floppy, for those of you who don't know. Back in the day, you've seen the floppy disks, the three and a half and like the five and a quarter inch floppies. But then in the late 90s, they, I Omega, I think it was called, there was a jazz drive and then a, I think it was called a zip drive. And it could hold like 128 megs. Or something we'd be like whoa. And they were always they never worked. It's one thing I think people forget. <laughs> They're like, oh, oh you're nice. So you, you know, you grew up partially in the nineties. You must have a lot of familiarity with computers because you know, in the 70s, they were playing around with Texas Instruments on 4chan and stuff. 4chan. Fortran. Not 4chan. Fortran. It was an early computer language. But computers didn't really work. Like, you'd buy a printer, and it just wouldn't work. And you'd work on getting your printer to work for, like, weeks, and it would just never work, and it'd never work right. And then there'd be some weird update, and then it just gone. So back in the day, like being a computer person, there's the joke, you know, don't ask me to fix your computer. But people really needed that because it was just difficult and weird how you had to get drivers and download them and extract them and put them in certain folders. And people that are doing real stuff with computers now are probably laughing. But like imagine, you know, just an everyday person 
having to figure that stuff out. I was considered good with computers, and I was not, by any means, good with computers compared to other people. I just like troubleshoot stuff and would end up fixing it somehow and be like, eh, I don't know. I just turned it on and off. That's what I did. In case you're wondering. All right, I can't, I can't get too caught up in my own style because now I'm having too much fun. Is this about Picasso or is it about me? <laughs> it's all about me. Yo, we got somebody commenting. I didn't hear any ding. I thought I'd hear a ding. You know, excuse my... Man, I can't see it. Hey, so yeah, sorry, I'm just like figuring out, I'm going through OBS so my like messages are kind of goofy. Um, what's Picasso's style based off is the question from Uni. And Picasso's style, they, they talk about like physics and rel relativism, and, or not relativism, <laughs> the theory of relativity. Um, Multiple viewpoints at the same time is pretty much the the core of Picasso and cubism and Brock and seeing around objects, seeing if a painting, you know, paintings are flat by their very nature. I know it sounds kind of silly, but um, this is a flat surface, so accentuating that flatness and saying. This is a very simple way to make form. I mean, now you could go the route of explaining all these smart um, conceptual reasons why he did it, but I don't think painters really think like that. I think painters tend to react more. A lot of art historians tend to want, or maybe not anymore, maybe this has changed, but they tend to want like a simple explanation, like Picasso did this because he was on a steam train and he went on that steam train and he saw the world fly past and he was like wow i want to paint like that and they never had steam trains before and people like that explanation because it's like oh that makes sense but i don't think um painters make sense <laughs> i think they react a lot more than we give them credit for the kind of amazing thing however is that simultaneously in different parts of the world artists can react similarly and of course now with Instagram everybody's kind of looking at you know different artists style and I've said before I don't really like the term style it, I find it kind of annoying it's like how do I paint in this person's style it's like, the person paints in their style because they're that person. And we can look at him and we can kind of rip off certain techniques, but it's always going to have our signature on it. And that's kind of like with these videos, these are my attempts at playing around with different artists and trying to paint in their style, so to speak. Ugh. I'm gonna make that nose lighter, make it, try to pop it forward a little bit. But yeah, part of um, Picasso and why he started painting stuff messed up would be the simple fact that we were thinking about the canvas differently. The roots of abstraction had already begun people like Kandinsky, Miro, these artists. And so they start playing around with purely abstract canvases as well. And that begs the idea, what is a painting? What is a portrait? Are we just trying to be illusory? Meaning we're trying to make illusions, trying to be magicians.
or can we accentuate the paintiness of paint and the flatness of the surface? And that's part of the painting, is acknowledging that flatness. And again, as you can see, I'm just, it's called scumbling. So if you look at this paint, this paint is actually really, I'm not putting any linseed oil, nothing. So just straight up paint. And then I'm just scumbling it on top. So you gotta rub it a little bit more, but that's how you can lighten these areas up. Ooh, that's annoying on the camera. This yellow doesn't come through. Interesting. This whole section is considerably different on in real life. Kind of weird to see it, how it gets messed up on the camera. Oh well. Got a little bit of liquid in there. And this is kind of goofy. It's like this thing shouldn't be so dark. If our light's coming this way, then this area should be lighter up in here too. So we have to drastically make that lighter. chopped up a little bit more. And this has been annoying me just because the top lip should always be lighter, or the top lip should always be darker. The bottom lip should be lighter. Make an orange and then mucking it up. Some with a brown mucky color. Starting to get some forms in there. Yeah, this side still needs to be darker. This side's lighter, that side's darker. Simple, Let's keep it simple. One thing always to remember, light side, dark side. It's same stuff with Picasso. We may think it's supposed to be all messed up, but in reality, it follows the same rules. Light side, dark side. So I'm gonna mix 
mix that up. say rag. Oh, you're from North Dakota. You need a rag. Yeah, just put it in the bag over there. I'm in from Fargo. Fargo, I was actually in a video store. I worked in a video store, like an actual cassette VHS video store. My first job when I was still in high school. And I remember some woman got so mad about that movie because we even had it in stock and she was just like, Fargo is racist. <laughs> I was like, that is funny. I know, I know people that talk like that. They're exaggerated, of course, but overlapping planes I gotta deal with. Also on this, it's really, this should be darker. chill beats going on in my head that are way too chill, but I can't get them off without turning off my camera, so I just have to endure these awful Muzak beats. If anybody doesn't know what Muzak was, Muzak was a music service that would be installed in office buildings and it actually had a timer and you could turn the timer for how much music you wanted and it was always like smooth jazz like that you would hear in a supermarket but you could actually turn it on for like 30 minutes or 45 minutes I think my mom's building had a, a music timer I remember it and you turn it on for like 30 minutes and it immediately start playing I suppose it was probably on tape somewhere Probably had their own weird proprietary tapes that they use that were huge or something. Because you'd have to have to be something kind of robust if you're playing it from a switch. Because you're turning on it like a turning on the lights, turning the music up. Maybe that's gonna come back. Music. It's 
It's probably a Muzak channel out there somewhere. Live streaming, 24 hours of Muzak. It's 1984, and you're in Sears. Let's buy some tires. places when I was a kid we used to have places there are these places you'd actually physically go to play baseball I went to a baseball diamond now I'm just chopping it up for fun this isn't about Picasso again it's all about me that, that is kind of Picasso-y maybe that is a Picasso way to paint just paint really selfishly Totally for yourself. Reinforce this a little bit. This background thing is annoying me. Background thing. Differentiated from the back. There's not a good background foreground happening there. I'm gonna try a blue to really make it obvious that it's something different. Because we want it to look like, you know, this is in front of this. This up here. Now we know this is in front of this. Can't see it as much on the camera, but just use some blue here. This is big, but we need some big shapes. This thing, I don't like that edge either. Let's get rid of that. where I used to be. Cutting it up. I don't think the I think the shirt works okay. There's a few areas. Just trying to put stuff in front of other stuff. Make sure we know this is in front of this. 
otherwise that edge seems to work pretty good.
getting pretty close. Don't want to overwork it. This thing is not Picasso y. These should have some more of a swoop. Could be wearing a hat in real life, but you see, this is going to be lighter up here in reality. So you're really thinking of that light coming from up there. Paint me as a Picasso. That would be a good little business. It'd be painful though because people would never like their portraits. People already don't like their portraits when they get something painted. I always like, I really want somebody to paint my portrait, but you gotta paint it how I want to look. <laughs> then people like Goya, somehow people like Goya managed to paint all these rich people and he's like, eh, I make you look ugly. And they're like, okay. I don't know how. I used to be able to get away with it. Lucian Freud did that. Look at Lucian Freud's painting of the queen. The queen was not impressed. It's like, what? It was like taken from this little <laughs> newspaper image and she's like a scrunched up cartoon character, big thick paint. You said you wanted to be painted by Lucian Freud. If you didn't want to look like that, uh, you should just take a photo on your phone and push the paint filter on it. Probably work better. But if you could find the right type of clientele, they'd have to sign some agreement beforehand sign something is like you get one try I'm not getting endless revisions like a, a graphic design you know logo for a frozen yogurt company you get one chance at the portrait you can pay me to make that portrait not me but if you had that business yeah one try paint you as Picasso some people probably like it. Other people would be like, that doesn't look like me. And that happened with Picasso too, where people would literally just be like, eh. Like imagine, you know, you have your mistress and she's, you know, sitting in the corner smoking a cigarette on a, one of those reclining chairs. 
Picasso's like, I have to sketch you now. Picks up a piece of paper and starts sketching, and then, you know, shows her the picture. <laughs> she looks like an insect, with, like teeth coming through or something. Like, oh, it's, it's good. It looks great. Is that really how you see me? This is way too late. Let's get rid of that. Go down here. Yeah, it changes that a lot. I think this whole thing just needs to be darker. bit of linseed oil with some liquid in it. I got the uh, fine detail it's called. Fine detail liquid. Um, it's just runnier. It's all right. This stuff just makes it dry faster. I never understand what people are like, yeah, I'd like to paint with oils, but they just take so long to dry. It's like, you gotta do all your paintings in one day, in like 30 minutes? You can wait a day. You can put stuff in the paint to make them dry faster. Obviously flatten my head quite a bit. See now, it, this is, you can get into the baking a cake, like I was talking about last time, you know, where you're just painting because it's fun to just move the paint around, and then it's like you're, you're baking a cake essentially. Baking a cake, you're decorating a cake, you're just like brink, brink, squirting out different plops of color, mindlessly making flowers. I'm sure they have, they put a lot of thought into making flowers too. I shouldn't say mindless, but kind of repetitious form of making where you're not thinking too much, you're just kind of doing it. That happens in painting too, where you just you can just keep keep adding, keep adding, keep drawing. You know, sometimes students will draw and redraw the same line like 20 or 30 times and they keep erasing. Oh, this nose, this nose. Just yeah. Just draw it right. <laughs> Have you thought about drawing it right? Like Steve Sheehan would, uh, Stephen Sheehan was a teacher at Lyme Academy of Fine Arts. And a lot of us were kind of terrified of him. But he was, he was never yelling or mean to people, but be very frank in his critique. And he used to say, there's no reason there's no reason this shouldn't be perfect. It's like... <laughs> That's the response to how you're drawing. It's not perfect. And we drew boxes. All we did was boxes. We drew boxes for an entire year. Just boxes. We made boxes out of coffee stirrers and paper. And then we had to make a skull out of coffee stirrers and paper. And those skulls were actually pretty good. Like there was a couple, I was like, man, at first when I heard this assignment, like go steal a bunch of coffee stirrers, cut them, hot glue them together into little planes and then make a skull out of it. I was like, what? I got a picture of it somewhere. I could find, probably. But when I started making it and actually thinking about, okay, I gotta make this plane here, make this plane here, and it's essentially what we're doing here, really. So you imagine like this is, um, this would be like a coffee stir, and you'd cut this end and cut that end, 
and then hot glue there and hot glue there, hot glue there, and that would be your piece, and then you'd have to stick it to another piece. So the exercise was all about planes, just really focusing on planes, planes of the face, in this case, with the skull, planes of the skull. So really thinking about where those planes come and go. Getting a little bit too, too tight, tightening up. Picasso's not tight. It's one of the battles with painting. Just staying loose. Anybody who's good at what they do, they always just make it look effortless. Sometimes we get lucky. Everybody gets lucky. Like I, one time I played a, a pig. I was playing pig, the basketball, and I couldn't miss. It, it made no sense. It's honestly stuck in my head. Everybody witnessing was like, "What is happening?" Um, but I was like throwing shots from the playground, one-handed, like full court from like a children's bridge and just banking it in. And it happened more than once. And for some reason, everything was just on that day. But besides those days when the uh, stars align, Usually, when you're good at something, you just kind of start making a compartment for your brain. Maybe talk about muscle memory. If we kind of train our brains to do the same thing over and over again, we get used to it. And we don't have to necessarily think about it. And that's a tough thing when you first start out painting, because you want to think. And the worst thing is if you're worried about wrecking your painting. If you're worried about wrecking your painting, like you have to paint more. You should just be able to plop the brush down. You can always go back. Yeah, when you do stuff long enough, it does become more like habit. That's why routine is so important, especially in these days. I was actually really blown away when I thought, you know, I'm going to look on Twitch and see what people are making on Twitch. Because I used to uh, make these paintings of video games years ago. I was doing paintings like Road Rash and stuff like that, old Sega games. Now people do this stuff all the time. But um, back in the day I got kind of a bunch of publicity, got on all these websites and stuff for making paintings video games because I'm interested in how people kind of construct their identities with these online personas and environments essentially that they're spending a lot of time in. And uh, so I went and started looking at Twitch. I teach as well. I teach online at the University of Colorado and in Prague as well, at Prague College. But I don't teach painting there. There is no painting class. It's a, more of an interactive media, experimental media school. That's why I got my own school now, Oko Academy. I'm in it. One student. That's all I want. I already got one. But, um, yeah. I have a feeling art school is going to change. All school is going to change. The way we think about education is outdated and silly. 
there's there's a lot of good reasons to go to a nice free art school with really good facilities and the main reason I'd say is to just use it as your own factory to make a bunch of stuff if you go in with that attitude you're gonna be fine in all your classes because you're gonna have a bunch of stuff right the reason I don't know too many teachers that are gonna freak out if you just have all the work done and literally usually during the work represents maybe five hours of work a week maybe and that, that should be enough to cover your assignments but that should be a day's worth of work but anyway I was looking at twitch and I was like okay what's what are we gonna find on twitch and I like um, I have a real soft spot for like Dungeons and Dragons, obviously with video games, because I used to be making all these paintings of video games. But um, I have a soft spot for this sort of stuff, playing Dungeons and Dragons growing up. These old sci-fi illustrations. Frazetta, Frank Frazetta as a painter, if you don't know him. Frank Frazetta was like, I don't know, he must have been, I'm guessing he's Italian, maybe he's from... Wisconsin. I have no idea. Um, but I had a calendar. I remember I got a calendar, like a Dungeons and Dragons calendar for Christmas, probably in, I don't know when. Super little. And it had a Frank Frazetta painting of this like knight on a horse with these big horns. And I thought that those paintings were the coolest thing ever in the history of the planet. <laughs> you know, I cut them all out after every month was passed and put them all up around my uh, room. So I don't, I, what I'm saying is, like, even though I come from, like, art school background and all this sort of stuff, I wasn't coming on Twitch judging people for doing dragons or whatever. And, um... Having taught for a long time, I'm kind of used to seeing how much people, how much work people are willing to do. And oftentimes when students will come in, they will uh, show you immediately how much work they can do very quickly. Of course, people have stuff that comes up in those things as well, but family situations or whatever. But many times, you can just see that people are really willing to work and put in the hours. That's half the battle right there. And I was popping around, looking at different videos, and I saw this guy, Seanot Bush. He makes these little sculptures out of that, um, I think it's called polymer clay. And he makes these little sculptures of those things. And I was like, yeah, this, this reminds me of this guy I went to Lime Academy with, actually, who's a really good sculptor. And um, I was checking out his stream. It was my first art stream that I saw. Many type. <clears throat> and then I looked at his schedule. And I was like, dude's on six hours a day. <laughs> you know, I don't get, I don't get students that want to be, be up six hours a day. And uh, that's when I really thought, you know, there's, there's something to just forcing yourself to get on. If I could do three hours stream in a day, I can't because I have, I have to teach in a little bit actually online today. Um, so I get in the t hours when I can, but keeping yourself to that schedule six hours a day. It's, I think it's an amazing and a really cool way to, to keep track of your time that you spend in the studio so you can really see, am I working as much as I should be? And it also gives you a reason, gives you a routine that you can kind of click into a little bit. You know, like right now, I'm definitely painting and I'm broadcasting it. Yo, what's up, Borlip? 
thanks. Um, but yeah, I'm basically broadcasting this stuff to the internet and it keeps you, keeps a very hard record of how much time you're spending in the studio by having all these videos. I download them all. And I was thinking it would be cool to have a, a year. You know, how long would it take to get, I have like a day worth of streaming, you know, I guess about a week I've been on or so, about 10 days maybe. But how long does it take to get a year, a year's worth of streaming? That'd be pretty crazy. Somebody could do the math on it. Thanks for coming through, Borlip. You can check me out on YouTube on Painting Course. Is my name on YouTube? I'm like the the old school way of thinking about naming stuff, and it just stuck with me. Um, you know, if I had a air conditioner repair shop, it would probably be called Air Conditioner Repair. Because that's how people used to think. It's like, oh, you'd look in the yellow pages, you'd look in the telephone book, I need air conditioner repair. And that's why you'd have, people would want the first spot in the telephone book too. So they'd be like, this is AAA air conditioner repair. Because want, you wanted to be first in line at the top of the phone book. One, two, three, A, A, A. A, 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 air conditioning repair. A plus air conditioning repair. But yeah, my, uh, my YouTube handle is painting course. You can check out my other videos there. Still new to Twitch, but I like the idea of just streaming here and then Downloading the stream. I know it's just make. Oh, you're making clips. Yeah, basically. But then I can. I can time lapse it for. For YouTube as well. Is the static piece? No, the static piece is a Picasso. I just grabbed a. I grabbed a Picasso off the internet. I started off this piece before. And um, it's becoming kind of an amalgamation of different Picassos into one. So I was just looking for some moves, for some Picasso moves. So I looked, got that photo to rip off some different elements. But I'm trying to make my own, my own composition with these techniques. Picasso has a, a great series of portraits of Mary Therese, which are really nice, from would have been the 1930s or so. And I'm getting a little, getting a little bit too worried about all these small little areas. I love this brown color. I always use it in my paintings. If you want to check out my other stuff, this is my other types of paintings that I usually do. So yeah, I usually do these big blobbies, and then I do these painting-like videos for fun. I've done three now on Picasso, three painting-like Picasso videos. Yeah, drippy, explosive, blobby. I make basically make portraits of people turning into blobs and exploding with their internet avatars. <laughs> we can look at one if you want. Get up close. So yeah, that's 
that's what I've, I've been here. I've been in my new studio. I just moved here. So I've been in my new studio for a couple, only about a month now. So getting, getting situated, getting back into the groove. I'm also kind of feeling like, you know, I got where I do my other videos is this little closet because the sound is a lot better in there and it's kind of a nice, it's like just a little, it's a miniature man cave. And now I'm at the phase with this painting where I'm like, I kind of want something for that little closet. So I think I'm going to take this painting home with me. put it in the closet. So I'm kind of getting to the stage where I'm like, I want something to be cool now too. Even if it becomes less Picasso-y. Always going back in time because we can't make sense of the present. So we just look at the past and try to deconstruct it. I think that's where we're at. Frozen. This brightness was just bugging me. Took too much. Uh, just darken it up a little bit. red background. Cool, thanks Borlip. Thanks for coming through. We, all have, we always have our moves, kind of these signature moves, like I was talking about. Your signature kind of looks like yourself, if, no matter what. I suppose people probably don't use their signatures as much as they used to. But painters always have a certain move, you know? And just the way that you deal with pain, it's your way of dealing with it. So Picasso wouldn't approach this painting in this way. I don't know what this this plane going around. I just like how it makes the form, but I don't really think that's a Picasso move. That's a more of a Jeremiah Polachek. Something I would do in my paintings. Uh, but I like it, so I'm gonna keep it.
feel like that neck's going around in space somehow. That just needs to be a little bit lighter there. getting pretty close. looks pretty close I think we'll call it for this one uh, yeah thanks it's a good session I don't think we got any more questions part two maybe there'll be a part three Picasso portraits 